Welcome to another segment of Los Angeles Physics. Dan-a-net, dan-a-net. Physics. Buenos dias, señor y señora. We're here today to bring you something that has never been brought to you before. To you, the game of soccer may just be a game that keeps the body going. But to some people, it is a passion and a lifelong dream. And to me, Rainier, and Jacobo, it has become a two, not three, but two week project that we have been researching, digging into with our blood, sweat, and balls. Soccer balls, of course. We have superstars all over the world, like Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi, Mia Hamm, Hope Solo, Zala. and of course, David Beckham, himself, who have all basically mastered the technique of kicking a soccer ball. Whether it's bending it like Beckham, passing it like Prado, marrying it like Martinez, ripping it like Rivera in the back of the net, blasting a kick past the goalie like Messi, or chipping shots from all angles like Ronaldo, they all, all perform physics. physics. So today, we're going to show you all the ins and outs and mechanics of a basic soccer kick. We'll examine the vectors involved with trajectory, some equations dealing with work and energy, slide wire and some forces that act on a soccer ball after being kicked. So stay tuned, because it might be more than what you expect. Expect. Welcome to the physics of kicking a soccer ball. We want you to fully understand our concepts, so we're splitting this up into three segments. Brainstorm, research, and analysis. So let's begin. So, brainstorm. We all just started yelling out different words like equations and free body diagrams, velocity, vectors, and acceleration. What is soccer? Gravity? And that related to physics, and somehow they all applied to kicking a soccer ball. Action reaction. This is where we all where we started getting into the information, so pay close attention. Kicking. So, the path of a kicked ball follows a curved trajectory. But, uh, scientists were near. How does that ball get pushed into that path? Well, it has to do with potential and kinetic energy. Both energies trade off with each other, and there's also air resistance, but we won't take that into account for air resistance for all preceding calculations. When someone kicks a ball, the law of conservation of energy and angular motion occur. If no energy was lost, the speed of the ball would be exactly twice that of the foot. The momentum of the foot goes into the ball, which gives the ball velocity and makes it travel a certain distance. For our equations aspect, we had kinetic energy, which is the energy of moving objects, in this case the soccer ball. It depends on mass and velocity. Potential energy is energy stored in the ball. This depends on the position above the surface. Potential energy at the top of the trajectory equals the kinetic energy at the bottom. So another equation would be 1 half mass times velocity squared equals mgh, which is mass times gravity times the height of the object. Total energy would be potential plus kinetic. Gotta work, slight work, is a transfer of energy. When work is negative, the kinetic energy decreases, and when work is positive, the kinetic energy increases. Free fall occurs at any time an object is in the air and, only influenced by, and is only influenced by gravity. Now here are, now here are some forces. Gravity, drag, and magnus force act on the flight of the ball. Gravity pulls objects towards the earth. Drag is like friction and slows down the horizontal velocity of the ball. Faster speeds means larger effect of drag. Let's look at some pictures to understand the Bernoulli's principle and magnus force. Bernoulli's principle says the air moving above the surface of the ball is going faster than the air around the ball. This creates decreased air pressure on the ball. Magnus force applies to the ball moving in the air with spin. Spin causes air to take a different path around the ball, which causes it to move all over the place. It acts at right angles to velocity and the axis of spin as seen in the picture. Next are Newton's three laws of motion, which are very important to kicking the soccer ball. So the first one, an object in motion tends to stay in motion. An object at rest tends to stay at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. The second one is phonetic equals mall. 
Third, if object A exerts a force on object B, then object B exerts an equal and opposite force on object A. For vectors and the free body diagrams, we'll look at these in the next segment. Results and analysis. Our last segment applies all of our research into soccer. This is where we have a little fun. Vectors indicate direction and are made of the sum of an x and a y component. Those black arrows represent velocity, which is displacement over time. Those red arrows represent the path of the ball due to the force of the kick and then of gravity. Our picture isn't the most accurate, but the arrows show all the same length, showing the result. It is also not shown in this diagram, but acceleration can be observed. Acceleration, which is change in velocity over time, is the same at every point due to gravity. Now look at that trajectory. During the first half of the ball's flight, the kinetic energy is enough to go against gravity. However, gravity is strong enough to pull the ball down during the second half of the flight. This is just another view inside our data calculating and representation process. We wanted to show all our viewers the credibility of our reliable information. Free fall occurs right there. Just watch that ball in the air. What a beauty. Gotta love One Direction. So just one sample calculation for all of you is a uh, free fall of the ball after it reached its peak. So as you see right there, you can see the, the equation, but we just decided to take a guess at uh, how long it took. Um, but A of course equals uh, the force due to gravity, which is 10, and when you multiply all that, you get 61.25. Before we look at this in slow-mo, I just wanted to, to say that this is not the proper technique to become a superstar like Ronaldo, but it gives us a few views of what happens because of a kick. This is a free body diagram. Since the ball is at rest, the force of gravity is pulling down the ball and the normal force is holding it up. Now this is an action-reaction pair. The ball exerts a force on Jake's foot, while Jake's foot exerts the same force on the ball, which refers to the Newton's third, third law. So why doesn't Jake or the, the other soccer players fly backwards after they kick the ball? Because the ball has less mass. I hope you all noticed the toe kick. Dot, dot, dot. Grab some balls, soccer balls of course, and kick them. Buenos Aires. Hey, I just met you. This is crazy. Buenos Aires.